Devastation akin to an atomic bomb. World powers are in a race for the next Manhattan Project. This time, instead of an atomic bomb, the atoms make up a quantum computer. In this special report, we look at China's goal to be the first to get their hands on the ultimate cyber weapon, how China tracks up against the U.S. in terms of this race, and how Americans' personal information is at the heart of it all. Welcome to China in Focus. I'm Tiffany Meyer. There's a race brewing between world powers to be the first in achieving quantum computing. Such a device will be able to wipe out any kind of encryption that currently exists today in order to extract whatever kind of data, classified or otherwise, that it wants to get its access to. So what you're talking about is the ultimate weapon in cyber warfare that could come as a result of our, the, the race that we're engaged in with China uh, towards a quantum computer. That's Arthur Herman, director of the Quantum Alliance Initiative and senior fellow at the Hudson Institute. He notes whoever controls the next quantum computer will have powers akin to the atomic bomb. Potentially as important as the race to create the hydrogen bomb because of the enormous catastrophic effect if the Chinese were to have a code-breaking quantum computer before we have it or before we're really ready to face it. The devastation could have consequences rivaling the next Manhattan Project, the World War II research effort to develop the first nuclear weapons. And because of that, world powers are in a race to get there first. China's Baidu just announced its first quantum computer. It boasts a power of 10 qubits. But what does that mean? Baidu's has 10 qubits, right? Uh, if you have a quantum computer with 100 qubits, in other words, 100 uh, data processing units that run on, that, that depend upon quantum physics, a 100 qubit quantum computer has more computing power than all of the existing hard drives in the world. Herman notes the power of the computer lies in how many qubits it has. By the time we get to let's say a 500 qubit quantum computer, you're going to have more quantum computer than there are more atoms in the universe. This brings us back to the race for the next Manhattan Project, the next big shift in mankind. How is China shaping up? And what does Baidu's announcement mean for us? It's not a story that needs to keep anybody up at night or worry about uh, that what Baidu uh, breaking into our encryption systems. But he says what should concern us is the overall trajectory. They see the goal. China, Beijing sees the goal. They see the prize at the end of this. And we do too, but we need to make sure that our efforts to achieve that goal and to protect our data and networks are as comprehensive and as coordinated as China's are. These are industries that America is used to dominating. But how's that history of domination made us complacent? Herman says the important thing to keep in mind is that the Chinese regime is playing the long game. Uh, otherwise, we could be waking up one day, perhaps in 2030, perhaps in 2035, perhaps sooner, to an entirely new world, uh, thanks, to, thanks to the catastrophic code-breaking power of a large-scale quantum computer. Back to the Baidu story. Herman explains. The Baidu story is directionally disturbing in this sense, that Baidu, right, it's like, it's like the Chinese Facebook, right? It has that kind of a, it's, just, it's basically a platform. Herman notes there's a coming war for data. But what is it that Baidu, Facebook, TikTok, what are they the great masters of? Handling large amounts of data, right? Of using artificial intelligence apps in order to sift through big data and come up with solutions, come up with a whole set of conclusions about what people are going to do, how, what people are going to look for uh, when they're browsing on their Facebook page. Now, what drives artificial intelligence and machine learning is data. The concern comes in if or when these are combined. Now, if you link up those 
AI applications with the enormously speeded up computing power of quantum, then you're talking about breakthroughs that could come at, at a blinding speed in terms of being able to use AI uh, in order to build predictive models, in order to shorten the decision chain on how to respond to moves, whether it's on the, mili on the battlefield or in the economic arena uh, or in the political and di diplomatic arena. Um, the, the whole race in order to dominate artificial intelligence and machine learning uh, now suddenly takes on a whole new and more dangerous and menacing front. Now, when it comes to machine learning, that goes back to the issue of data. But where is the Chinese regime getting that data? Popular social media apps like Facebook and TikTok collect mountains of data. But there have been concerns with TikTok's ties to Beijing. TikTok parent company ByteDance is based in China. And under Chinese law, any company must hand over data when asked by the regime. That brings up security concerns in the U.S. Casey Fleming, CEO of intelligence and security strategy firm Black Ops Partners, says the app is more than meets the eye. TikTok is a weaponized military application in the hands of our middle schoolers, our kids, our high school kids, and our young adults. But Herman says it goes even deeper. It's also become a means by which Chinese propaganda, communist Chinese propaganda, can be uh, spread and infiltrate into the minds of our teenagers uh, and of TikTok users. Um, so the danger point with TikTok runs both ways, not just the data that's coming in, but also the propaganda and fake news that's going out. As for what the Chinese regime could potentially do with all that information it gathers. They can use that information really, number one, the most important is to, is to steal intellectual property. Uh, secondly, to, to blackmail. Uh, thirdly, it's a propaganda platform. You can see all these TikTok challenges and, the, and most of them are very dangerous to our children. Uh, and, you know, to steal cars, to do challenges that puts the, you know, that w we've lost a lot of kids to these TikTok challenges that come up about once a month. You have to understand it's a, it's a propaganda platform completely owned, operated and controlled by the Chinese Communist Party. He highlights how this ties into the long term. It's not something that's just started. It's been going on for decades, but it's actually peaking now. You're seeing a lot of things happen uh, since COVID. You're seeing a lot of things happen as far as the aggressiveness of the Chinese Communist Party or all around the world on many, many different fronts. And that's really called a thing called hybrid warfare. And every American should understand what hybrid warfare is. And they say, well, what is that? Hybrid warfare is achieving military objectives and political objectives through non-military means. So in other words, weakening your, uh, your adversary to where they're much easier to take over. It's not just through our social media apps. Fleming notes it's happening on multiple fronts. Fentanyl is the number one killer of Americans, and uh, Wuhan, China, is the number one fentanyl manufacturer in the world. And they send that uh, fentanyl along with money laundering capabilities to the Mexican drug cartels. So that's just one area, religious uh, warfare, all these different things that people need to understand. Uh, you know, psychological warfare, information slash cognitive warfare, that's what's ha happening on social media today. So how can we counter this threat? Let's start with data. The federal government is trying to take steps now to limit the degree to which American companies do hand over their data or provide access to data uh, to uh, Chinese companies, which means ultimately to the Chinese government and to the Chinese military and intelligence services. But to really understand a threat, Fleming says it begins with being informed. Number one is to stay educated. Broadcasts like these uh, are the way to stay educated. Go to the company page on LinkedIn and, and that'll really, uh, you know, connect a lot of dots for you. But, you know, it's happening on your watch. You know, I'm speaking to the audience and stay educated and do what you can to, with your power, you know, get involved in maybe a movement to, to wake up on this thing. Alongside the data threat, countering the quantum threat starts with a shift in perspective. It's a change, a shift in change in how we think about security and how we think about data. An expert says it needs to happen in every sector of society. It's a culture change with our companies, with our culture in our, in our country, with our politics. Uh, it's we're all one and we're all together in this. And on the national level, there have been calls for decoupling.
But whether we want to or not... China is already decoupling, so they can insulate their economy as they go forward with, with a potential war with Taiwan, which may involve the free world. Um, so they are absolutely looking at that, and you have to look at decoupling as a very serious thing. So is it going to get down to the good guys uh, versus the bad guys? I think you're absolutely seeing that now, and you're going to see that play out much more in the future. Following the Ukraine war, China saw the sanctions the West slapped on Russia and started taking steps to protect itself. But also decoupling on the other side, China, uh, Russia and so on, is going to hurt them a whole lot more. Looking at how we got here, Fleming explains that it took years to dig ourselves into the current conundrum. So we've kind of done it to ourselves, and there's gonna there's a, a time when we're gonna have to pay some of that back, and so it will come back with higher prices. It's gonna come back with not having some things that you're used to having in the past, but um, it's gonna be forced whether whether the CCP CCP forces it, which they are. It's it's early on, or whether we enforce it. The question is, it's going to happen. Do we want to be ahead of the curve or behind the curve? Being ahead of the curve is probably the right thing to do. And making sure the U.S. digs itself out may come with some growing pains. Make no mistake, it will be painful. And uh, but China will be going through a much worse pain than the United States and the free world. But if we don't take those steps to shore up our own defenses, to undo some of the choices we made in the past, Fleming points out what lies ahead. People say, well, how serious is it? And I say, well, if, if you think about it, this is World War II all over again, 1939, with four countries that are all aligned against the free world, uh, same as World War II. But the difference is now it's, the, it's at the speed of technology and the stealth of hybrid warfare. So it's, it's beyond very serious, and it's being kept under the surface by stealth warfare and by these, uh, these stealth applications like TikTok that we're talking about and those type of things. Just like the atoms that make up the building blocks of nature, the next atomic weapon starts with something small. Little pieces of our information, data that's collected by platforms like Facebook and TikTok, details that are then fed into machine learning and artificial intelligence that can power the next quantum computer, the next ultimate weapon that could wipe out the world. Not through a mushroom cloud on the surface, but an explosion across all electronics, breaking the unbreakable wiping out power grids, leaving whole nations deaf, dumb, and blind. But until we get there, there's still time to change course. That's all for today's China in Focus on YouTube. We're now sharing a shortened version of our program here after being demonetized for more than a year. Here's what to look out for in our second half. The U.S. is banning the sales of advanced microchips made by an American chip designer to China. But the company can still develop a certain type of the technology in the country. And Arizona's governor is in Taiwan. He's on a mission to meet with advanced microchip suppliers, as Taiwan is the home of the world's top manufacturers. The full episode is available on our partner platform, Appoc TV. To sign up, click the link down below. Thanks for watching China in Focus. I'm Tiffany Meyer, and see you tomorrow. The 2022 NTD 8th International Chinese Vocal Competition will be held from September 29th to October 2nd at the Merkin Hall of Kaufman Music Center in New York City. The competition is honored to have specially invited vocalists with the world-renowned Shen Yun Performing Arts to serve on its panel of judges. The gold award is $10,000. For more information, please visit vocal.ntdtv.com.